Hey everybody, this is Josh here again from Prepper Advantage. One of the questions that I get asked all the time is what is in my fire kit? And that is a great question because uh, arguably fire is one of the most important survival skills out there. Uh, so, you know, because it's, it's so important and because it facilitates so many of the other priorities. So that's a great question. I'm gonna take a minute and show you what I carry inside my fire kit. All right, so I like to keep mine in a, in a pouch right here on my hip. Um, so, you know, if I lose my pack, if I get separated my, from my pack, if I'm out getting water, out checking trap line, whatever I'm doing, I still have my fire kit on me. And of course, I keep some redundancies in my backpack as well. But I like to keep my uh, possibles pouch here with my fire kit in it. My main fire kit is in here. So uh, what I've got in here, and I'll go through it real quick. I've got kind of sort this out a little bit for you real quick so that it'll make sense to you. Kind of a smorgasbord here. Get everything out first then I'll talk to you about it. Here we go. Alright, so modern ignition sources. I've got a uh, Zippo lighter. Normally I'll carry a Bic um, and I have this in here with some tape around it just to prove a point uh, because these evaporate. Uh, normally I have a Bic in here but this is kind of a more uh, traditional lighter. It's sentimental. It's got one of my old units uh, on it so I, I keep that in there. Uh, but I wrapped it with electrical tape trying to keep it from evaporating and I can tell already that uh, the fuel was still leaking out and it actually made that tape lose its stickiness. So probably, nope, it still works. Cool. But uh, yeah, so, lighter, then I don't carry a full set of matches, but I've got a super match, which we talked about in the last live feed. This is made from four Titan, Yuko Titan matches, wrapped in cotton, and uh, that's all dipped in wax to make it waterproof and make it burn longer like a candle. So that's a super match. Got my lighter, my matches, very large ferro rod. This is from Titan Survival, um, and it's got a little whistle on it. This is uh, Titan Survivor cord which actually has the seven inner strands for the paracord. It also has a wax jute fire starter in it, uh, some, some utility wire that can be doubled over and used as a snare wire, and fishing line inside this paracord here. So uh, the reason I carry such a big one, this is a half inch by a five inch rod, is uh, when you're thinking about hypothermia, you start getting hypothermic, you're gonna lose fine motor skills. So these little tiny ones that you're using are gonna be more difficult. I'm looking for gross motor skills when I'm trying to, to fight off hypothermia in an emergency. Um, another thing is, you know, the cognitive function, cognitive function, your ability to think uh, is going to start dwindling as well. So anyway, the point being is large ferro rod, gross motor skills uh, to use that to get a fire going. So, and then my last is, this is a Hudson Bay uh, tobacco tin, has a, uh, I believe it's a six power, maybe a five power magnifying lens built inside the lid. Uh, so those are my four main ways of making a fire, my modern method of making a fire. Lighter, uh, stormproof matches, ferro rod, magna magnifying lens. Now, my initial backup to that is a bow drill. My initial primitive backup to that is a bow drill. So I carry about a three foot length of cordage. This, in this case, it's a little more traditional. This is waxed uh, jute. It could be paracord, it could be bank line, but that is the purpose of that is for a bow drill, uh, and that saves me the time of making the cordage on the fly in the wild. Um, get that out of the way. Then I have some uh, natural tinder, along with some, some more wax jute. The natural chin tinder that I choose to carry is fatwood, which is resin-infused pine, um, and uh, I'll do some videos on how to find that, but this stuff burns even when it's wet and in the southeast this is your go-to wet weather tinder. Uh, so I'll carry a couple of sticks of that and it's, it's all over the place here. I'll also carry a small pouch so that I can gather natural tinder as I'm walking along. Uh, so that's in there. Uh, it happens to be empty right now. And then I've got a flint and steel kit. Uh, this is a custom fire steel that was made for me by a blacksmith in Washington named Patrick Farneman. Uh, but it's a uh, it's a steel and it also has a bow drill divot in it. So if I need to do a bow drill fire, I've got two components 
that, that are already made for me that are ready to go inside my fire kit. This being my cordage, this being my bearing block, and it's a really good bearing block. Um, and then of course I carry a nice large piece of flint uh, so I can use that technique uh, to get a fire started as one more method. Now to go with the flint and steel, if you open up this Hudson Bay tin, I've got quite a bit of things. The magnifying lens, of course. I've got some char cloth in here. I've got some charred, um, I believe that's cotton gauze that's been charred. It takes a spark really well. Um, so I carry that. I've got some more unwaxed jute that I can make some super fine tinder uh, in a tinder nest or a tinder bundle. Uh, let's see what else have I got in here. A couple of slow matches. One's a lamp wick. Don't want to lose that. One's lamp wick and one's actually twisted jute, but these are actually treated in saltpeter um, that makes them burn like a slow match, like a traditional matchlock rifle. Uh, they burn very slow and very evenly when they're treated with that, um, I think it's potassium nitrate, I gotta, I gotta remember, but saltpeter uh, makes it burn really well. Uh, so I keep those in there. Then I've got a couple of uh, chunks of chaga, which is uh, Inonotus oblicus is a you know, chaga is tinder fungus. This will actually take a spark from traditional flint and steel uh, without charring. So this is something I find in the northeast all the time. Then a couple of other little things in here. These are milkweed ovums. This is what the seeds, all the fluffy seeds are attached to. These will actually take a spark without being charred from traditional flint and steel as well. So that's what's in there. Uh, and put that back together. Then I carry a separate tin because I don't want to put my, my brass Hudson Bay tin with a magnifying lens. I don't want to put that in a fire to char material. But I normally do not make you know char cloth in the field. When this starts dwindling out, I make char tinder, which is normally I'll use punk wood. But I have a separate tin, a charring and storage tin where I'll char punk wood and I'll actually use that and it works just as well as uh, char cloth does. Uh, so that's what I've got in there. Um, so my four main fire starters, you know, my, my, my modern style are my, my lighter, my super match, my ferro rod, my magnifying lens. My traditional method of starting a fire is my flint and steel with everything that I've got to make that happen. And then my first go-to primitive is of course my uh, bow drill. And I've got a couple things to facilitate that. A little bit of natural tinder with some fat wood and something to collect natural tinder while I'm out and about uh, heading to wherever I'm going. I'll, I'll fill up this little possum pouch as I go. So that is my fire kit and that's what's in there. And uh, probably, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, six different methods of, of starting a fire along with a couple of different forms of tinder as well as what I'm able to collect on the way and charred material works great with every single one of these. So every time I get a first fire, I'm going to char material for my next fire, but you know, I never actually bring these out empty just to char material in the field. I always carry them with something in them and replenish it in the wild as needed. So hopefully that helps you guys and uh, give you some ideas for your own kit, uh, but that is what I carry in my fire kit. See you guys next time.